Trailblazer was, and it is an, an identity, right? It's, it's um, we had to create the, lo the logo design. We had to create the whole corporation kind of look. Um, and uh, because it is at the, sometime in between the movie, we start seeing a lot of the actual company in the bowl, in the boardroom and the situation room. Um, then we have to start, you know, creating that, that um, corporate uh, idea of what it's going to look like. And we do have graphic designers. Um, we have, we obviously do a lot of research and all of the designs and ideas go through clearance so that we make sure that we're not doing anything that already exists. It was complicated and it's, yes, it's very um, technical in, in a way. And also we had to accommodate for spaces and we, we created a combination of two models. We did the MD80 and we combined it with the A320 so that we didn't have, first of all, no, we didn't have any copyright issues uh, for any particular uh, models, but also because we wanted it to be a little bit bigger in some areas and we wanted to just take the license of moving things around and to make it work to, you know, what we had available. Um, so, yeah, usually, I want to start by saying that you usually get mock-ups that are a certain size and we couldn't find anything bigger than 30 feet, 40 feet. We needed a whole plane because Jean-Francois really wanted to have that shot from the cockpit all the way to the tail. Um, and in order to do that, we needed a whole plane stripped and then rebuilt the interior in a stage so that we could put it on a hinge, it could be moved, and then on a gimbal so it could be also manipulated uh, forward and back and stuff like that. So imagine turning a landing strip into a jungle. This is supposed to be just a, a plane in the middle of the jungle. So we had to dump about, I think it was about, 80 trucks of dirt. We covered 1,500 by, feet by 200 feet wide. I mean, this was giant mongoose area of dirt and then put greens around, walls of green, so it felt like we were surrounding it as much as possible. And um, it wasn't until we did that scout that we realized, yeah, oh my God, we need so much more. This has to be so much bigger. The plane needs to move around. It needs to turn within this area, you know? So there were so many things we need to take under consideration. It's like, how do we pack, compact the dirt so that the plane can actually move easily without having any problems? How do we make sure that, you know, we had puddles of water. So every time that we had to fill this in, it was just like using the heavy equipment every Sunday to, to patch it up again for the next week of shoot. Um, we had to create two roads within the, the, trees that we had in the area, the actual, you know, the, the, the existing trees, and they had to be more than 200 feet long. So it was just like creating this whole environment that, that didn't exist. When Gerard Butler first came into like the first set, one of the first sets that we did was a compound. And you could tell that he felt very comfortable right away. It's like, okay, this is how I imagined it. This is how I felt it would be. And um, it just, it does help the actor just get into the, the action and just feel like, you know, this is, this is how it's gonna play. And I think it's been pretty much the same with all the other sets. I mean, when he was at the airport, we did Shani Airport. Um, it just, he felt very comfortable in the space. Same with the plane, just you know, totally relate to what's around him, how it works. Um, so, you know, it was a really pleasant way of seeing your work fulfilled and just uh, helping, you know, the actors just do their job properly and, and look great in general.